Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Angie Maverick, I'm the Marketing Executive for Signet. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to our second episode of the Unpack It series by Signet. Through this webinar series, we explore responsible business practices through continuous improvement approaches and explain how companies can create a lean and green future that provides simultaneous environmental and economic benefits. I would now like to introduce our presenters for the session. First up, we have Ronnie Curtis from Bundaberg Brew Drinks. Ronnie has been with Bundaberg Brew Drinks for over 14 years and has worn many hats over the years within the business. Currently, Ronnie holds the position of production manager and in his role, he continues to drive for efficiencies and waste elimination. Next up, we have Greg Fife. Greg has been in the packaging industry for over 35 years and has spent the last 14 years at Signet. As a national sales manager for SME, Greg is passionate about helping customers continually improve their supply chain operations and achieve simultaneous environmental and economic benefits. Next up, we have Brad Jevons. Brad is the business improvement manager for Signet. Brad is an organizational improvement leader and author whose purpose is helping people and organizations reach their potential, deliver greater value for their customers, society, and the environment. Brad has extensive experience within the primary and tertiary packaging area and helps organizations large and small achieve sustainable improvements for their businesses. Welcome Greg, Brad and Ronnie to today's webinar. Thanks Angelina. Thanks Angelina. Thank you. So everyone, I'm, I'm the host for today and I really appreciate the time Ronnie and Greg uh, to share. Today we're going to be exploring an iconic Australian manufacturer that is achieving such amazing things at the moment. And we're going to look at how they're actually doing more than just achieving growth and dramatic export growth and uh, improvement. They're also helping the environment. So what we're going to be exploring is we're going to explore a little bit on the three R concept for environmental gains. We're going to explore Bundaberg drinks and the project and their goals. We're going to look at what part Signet played and their tertiary packaging optimization process. And we're then going to look at film reduction and quality gains. And we're going to look at the continuous at improvement actions that you know both organizations are doing going forward. So I'll move into just introducing a little bit on the three R concept. So in relation to the whole environmental journey on, we've got we're on. We've got the 2025 targets with the Australian Government and APCO. We've got the Paris Agreement targets of 2030, 2050. By 2050, we want to be at zero. The three R concepts of reuse, reduce and recycle will really help you get to minimal impact and move towards zero you know, environmental impact from your organisation or at home. If you look at it in relation to packaging, there's some concerning stats we've got up here. So if you look at glass, paper and cardboard, plastic and metal, this is a volume of uh, packaging on the market. So you'll see paper and, you know, and paper board is up there. Plastic is about 20%. But when you look at the next slide, where you look at how much was actually recovered and actually put back through the into manufacturing again to be you know, reused, it's, it's very small currently with plastics. It's only about you know, 16%. And so that's the concern. That's what we've got to work with and really nail around the reuse, reduce and recycle. Now, the good news is the Australian government's just invested heavily in their in a project to actually support and co-fund the development of recycling centres around the country to be able to handle more soft plastics. You know, they do see that this is a path for the future to achieve the circular economy and reduce our environmental impact. So that's moving, but today we're gonna to explore how you can do things now to actually make a difference to that straight away, largely around the reduce um, and recycle aspect because there is channels to recycle now. With the next slide, if we look at the next slide, you can see some other statistics here, you know, and it is concerning currently around plastics. And so this is where we've all got to take action and actually do everything we can at the moment to make a difference. There's another factor to it, especially when you talk pallets. So today we're going to be focused a lot on supply chain plastics and packaging film, and that's the case study with Bundaberg Brewed Drinks. We need to consider safety with anything we touch in relation to supply chain items. If you look at that statistic, 24% of all workplace fatalities occurred in transport, postal and warehousing. 
and that stat is from uh, 2014 up to 20, uh, 20, 2007 up to 2015. So it's a pretty solid number. We have to consider safety and with the new laws of chain of responsibility and industrial manslaughter, it, it's critical. And we're gonna talk a bit about that today. Greg will share some elements on how you can make environmental gains and still secure safety. The other factor is damages. We're talking about reducing and coming up with ways to actually wrap pallets and you know, make improvement in our supply chain. There was a study done in Europe that showed that 4% of all transported goods arrived damaged. And I pose to you that the European roads are better than Australian. So we need to consider quality in this. No one wants goods getting to their customer which are being damaged in transit. And the wrapping processes and what we do there is so critical to that. So I just want to pose this, we are taking a holistic view today in our discussion around environmental safety and quality, and also we'll be talking cost. So you'll see there's a clear win-win throughout this presentation right across all. Just move on to the next slide and we'll talk about when you're considering doing any improvement, especially environmental, you need to consider the life cycle of that product and especially where does it end up? So if you look at this as a basic example of what we'd call the Bundaberg brew drinks example, where we've got a manufacturing process, it goes to a warehouse, gets wrapped, and then it goes through a supply chain to an end user. And to the company's credit, there's a lot of this going overseas at the minute, which is great for our economy. The end user is where that film gets stripped down. It can also get stripped down in transit, depending on what's happening. And that is where we've got to think about what's the best path to actually achieve recycling. Reduction happens back in the factory, and Ronnie's going to talk about that today with Greg, but recycling happens at the end user. So I just want to note that when we think about the environmental improvements we're going to make, we need to consider where that packaging is ending up and how do we enable that. And of course, Signet, we play a large part in that also, and it's a credit to the organisation that they're thinking about this bigger, bigger picture. So that's a brief introduction on the three R's concept of reduce, of, sorry, reuse, reduce and recycle and it's in the order of priority, we'll now get into the presentation and, and bring Ronnie and, and Greg into play. So Ronnie, I wanna start with you, if you don't mind. Ronnie, Bundaberg Brew Drinks is growing globally. I've mentioned it a few times. It's an Aussie success story in a, you know, a country town in Queensland, Bundaberg. Can you start by telling us a little bit about Bundaberg Brew Drinks? Definitely. Uh, Bundy, well, Bundy Brew Drinks, is a, it's a family uh, Australian owned uh, business. Um, we've been around for just over 51 years. Um, I think we're probably best known for our ginger beer, but also we have 12 other um, non-alcoholic beverages as well that we, uh, that we produce here. So we were founded in uh, 1968 by Cliff Fleming. Um, he started out back then, wanted to share his little Aussie dream fair and his ginger beer with the world and now it's uh it's exported to over 60 countries so it's it's fantastic to be a part of ronnie you've, you've always done a good job mate i've been a drinker of the ginger beer and sarsaparilla since i was a young fella so it's it's, it's wonderful mate with i know that in recent times you guys have had amazing growth and that volumes are going strong and it's so good to see an australian manufacturer taking it to the world do you mind do you mind providing us some insights into your supply chain and you know what sort of volumes are going through it currently and, and both locally and exporting. Definitely, it's, uh, I mean, we're experiencing our, our, our highest growth now, but it's, we've, we've had high growth in both our domestic and our export markets, um, as we've got there up there on the slide. So last year we produced in excess of 75,000 pallets of finished goods and, um, you know, well over 3,000 kilometres of Signet's premium wrap that we use. So, um, and this year we look like we're, we're gonna do quite well as well with everything that's happening currently in the world. So um, yeah, just massive, massive growth, which is great. And it's it's a testament to you know, Cliff's, just that naturally brewed non-alcoholic beverage. Um, you know, people, are, they're seeing the story. They We have the iconic rib cap, um, the glass stubby bottle, people are sort of, seeing that in the market now and, and really getting onto it. Yeah, it's amazing, Ronnie. Like, it's just such a brilliant thing to see. We can manufacture in Australia and we can take it to the world and export. It's so, so powerful. Mm. But are there any other elements that you believe has really helped 
Bundaberg Brew Drinks achieve this globally and the growth that you're having, apart from what you've already said? Uh, look, I think it's just that success story. Uh, you know, we've, we're, we're a natural product. So, you know, a lot of people are uh, turning to that, that natural product. So, um, and I think it's the presence as well. Um, you know, as we've grown, we've grown in a sustainable manner uh, around the world. So, um, yeah, I think that's about why, I suppose. It's, it's impressive. We'll move on to the next slide and have a look now at, we're going to delve now a bit more into the process side of things of this specific project. So Ronnie, with with looking at your your film and that whole environmental drive you're doing and looking at your palette side of things, I know there were some other challenges. What were your initial goals that you wanted to achieve from the project to improve your whole supply chain piece around pallets and so forth? Yeah, so we, as as we've, uh, you know, as our export market has grown, uh, the volumes have grown. So we we're finding that, um, you know, the pallet stability um, shipping to some of the countries around the world, um, we needed to improve our, as you said before, um, just the quality of the product arriving in its destination. So um, we were experiencing some uh, movement uh, in shipping. So because we do ginger beer and we do it very well. We don't do film, we don't do stretch wraps. So that's why we uh, went out and uh, we found Greg and Sid, um, who come into our business, brought the expertise into our business that we needed. Um, so we had uh, some, we've got some really great machinery here, but I just, we weren't utilizing that machinery properly. So um, Greg and his team come in and, and brought that wealth of knowledge that they have and the technology that they have to, I suppose, identify the areas of opportunity within our uh, machinery as well as our process. So um, bringing up the, the cube, um, working with the team, we, I suppose, found the, the what would you call it, the, the benchmark. So we were probably getting around at the time about 40 pallets to a roll. Um, and then after all the work we did over many, many months with Greg and the team, we ended up, uh, I think currently now we're getting 46 pallets, maybe 47 pallets uh, out of a, this out of the roll. So uh, there's been not a lot of machinery change. So we haven't changed any gear ratios. We haven't changed any speeds. It's just been basically just uh, working with Signet on finding the wrap that suited us and uh, yeah, we was continuing to look at uh, further wrap um, in the future to see if we can better that. Yeah, okay. So, so you're looking to keep running further improvement. That's awesome. Oh, definitely. So it sounds like yeah, definitely. it sounds like they um, you felt a lot of trust and a lot of engagement with them right from the start to go through that that journey. Oh, definitely. Hey. It's yeah. Thanks, Ronnie. Greg, what what approach did Signet take initially? Like, how did you go about that and you know, develop that process that Ronnie de described and sort of proved yourself, I guess, in that regard too. Yeah, well, firstly, we had to assess how the pallets were getting wrapped and what equipment they were using, what the film they were using, and, and basically asking the, the, the questions to the customer or the client, um, what issues they were having. So when we spoke to Ronnie and his team, uh, Scott Wilson myself uh, analysed the whole process and first up was the unstable pallets. Now that was um, that was a bit of a, a shock because they've got uh, quite good equipment. The machinery they have um, is very good. So it wasn't too old. Uh, it had uh, a fully integrated inline system. So on analysis, we, we tested the film and, and had a look at how much stretch is going through the geared rollers and how much secondary stretch is being applied um, and discovered that some of the pallets were getting uh, corner crush with too much force. Um, so we work with their team to just to slightly adjust the machine's uh, um, initial stretch through the geared rolling rollers um, and also looked at the, the force that was applied. Uh, the material they were using was producing only about 40 pallets um, out of a roll. And the initial product we put on was our, our platinum uh, 20 micron. So it was an equivalent uh, gauge, but um, what we initially found is that 
the product they were using wasn't actually measuring what they were saying. So we, we tested ours and it came out straight up at 46 without too, too much adjustment. So we, we found there's something not quite right here. Um, so let's, let's dig, dig a bit deeper. And we wrapped quite a few pallets and, and discovered that there's, uh, there's further improvement. That's good. It's amazing. So Greg, with it, like it sounds like you took a real scientific approach to it, but also you were looking at the whole system rather than just, yeah. you know, handing over a different film. Like, why yeah. did you take such a detailed process, mate? Why didn't you just hand over another film and say, here you go, Ronnie? Yeah, well, well exactly what uh, what you said at the start, the, the, the pallet's being unstable. So if we just gave another film without looking at that whole process, you're just going to get another film that might create an unstable pallet. So we needed to go back and, and look at how the, uh, the pallets are being stacked and, and all the pallets were, were perfect. Um, but it was going through the machinery was where we, we discovered that um, our film, our, our, our platinum blend film has an, uh, a higher stretch and puncture resistance from any of the others we see on the market. So we will be able, we were able to put uh, more stretch through our product and um, and reduce that secondary stretch. So that eliminated that corner crush on the on the cartons. But then we discovered that if we have a look at the whole thing, we could actually then start looking at other films as well in the family of our platinum range. So we brought out 17 micron film as well as 14 micron, um, and we even had some test film of 11 micron. So we had a whole range of products to, to implement. To start off, we're not gonna try and suggest that we go from a 20 micron down to 11 without extreme testing. Um, so to make Bundaberg feel comfortable and secure, we looked at obviously the, that whole process and, and made sure that what we initially set up is gonna be the, the best possible product for them at the time. Greg, what, what could happen, mate, if you did just jump from a 20 to 11 without actually going through a full scientific type of process like have you seen that done before and some outcomes well some people do that i mean um the film has a it's got to correlate with the machinery so there's a great number of types of machine out there uh, and they have different stretch ratios some are power pre-stretch some are even just friction break uh, so different films you just can't just throw on and expect them to work you really need to have a look at um, the capabilities of the uh, the film and also what the machine set at. So most of the films will work through most machines, but obviously you can get improved performance with tweaking and having a higher level of product. So um, the machinery we, we sort of were working on was, was up to the uh, higher standard. So we were, we were quite pleased to say, you know, we can actually manipulate this to create a best possible outcome. Um, yeah, and so with different films, you, you're always gonna get, uh, you've got to do your analysis. You can't just throw it on and think it's gonna work. And and that was probably a, from, sorry, sorry, Brad. Sorry, Ron. That was probably a, that's probably a great example here at, at uh, Bundaberg Brew Drinks, that whole process. So, I mean, Cigna could have just given us said that platinum 20 UM roll said, look, we'll try and beat the price. Here it is, put it on your machine. No doubt it would have held, um, did the same job as the previous wrap um, and business as usual. But, you know, through working with us, doing that testing, spending the hours on the machinery, using the technology like the cube that they had, we we're able to identify all of the areas where we could improve in. So instead of just getting the 40 pallets out of the roll from Signet that we were getting from previous supplier, we we're able to, by getting six, where, you know, we're literally stretching our money by getting the extra pallets out of a stretch roll. And it's not just about price, it's also about the stability. So we found that our uh, pallets were more secure to the pallet. So our finished goods were definitely not moving in transit. Um, and again, it's all around our environmental footprint as well. So by getting six more pallets per roll out of that stretch wrap, you know, we're doing, doing well for the environment in my opinion. Actually, we've got money. a few more. Um... Uh, Ronnie, we actually put the, that was on the 20 micro. When we when you dropped it down to the 17, we ended up getting actually 55 pallets out yes. of that roll. So yes, we did. There was, a, there was a huge advantage, and the film actually performed 
uh, slightly better too. It had a, a better uh, stability load uh, mm, rating. Yeah. So that was that was also exciting to see. So what I'm hearing, guys, it's about continuous improvement and taking it step by step to really get further down the line. We might go to the next slide. And um, Ronnie, I've got a I've got a question for you here, mate. Like, you know, how did the detailed process help to achieve the desired results for Bundaberg brewed drinks? Oh, it, fantastic. I mean, it, it had to be detailed. It couldn't just be, here, here's our stretch wrap, put it on your machine and go. Um, it had to be a very well scoped project. Um, you know, we, with us shipping up to 70, oh, like in excess of 75,000 pallets a year, we couldn't just um, put it on our machine and hope that it worked. We had to prove that it worked. So we had to prove the concept. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth with Greg and myself. That's why we've built such a great relationship over the years, because it, it's all about trust. Um, you know, you can be told that the product's a great product, but until you put that plan in play, work through it um, and make sure that it's sustainable because that's what we're here of it all the time is you know we we get this uh, the new technology or the or the new product and it works for a little bit and then it tapers off and then it ends up costing more so for us to make it sustainable into the future uh, working with Greg going through each stage gate as well so we Greg brought the uh, wrap to site brought the technical people along with it um, provide the training uh, give the operators on the floor, they were fully engaged in the process. So just for that change management as well. Um, yeah, that, that just that whole project in Compass was, was fantastic. And that's why today we're still doing great business with Sigmund. Yeah, from my role as a business improvement manager, that's like magic to my ears, I, I love it. Um, Ronnie, what, what did the reduction in film mean for Bundaberg brewed drinks? Like what did you actually gain out of it? Oh, we gained, I mean, the obvious one for us is cost. Um, so, you know, we've we reduced our wrapping cost per pallet uh, quite considerably. And when you're doing uh, more than 75,000 pallets a year of finished goods, let alone rewrapping raw materials and other, uh, there's a, a great gain. But there's also from a health and safety point of view as well. So if from a manual handling point of view, if we're putting less rolls into our machinery every day, um, there's also waste of, um, so reduction in motion. So the operators aren't getting off their forklift as much every shift to go in and change the rollout. So the the, the flow on effects, it, it touches all part of the supply chain. Yeah, oh, brilliant. And Ronnie, what, what did the quality gains mean? Because I know you mentioned early on that quality was a big part with the damaging hap happening to the product. What did the eliminating that mean for the business? Well, it's, I mean, we're a premium beverage. It's, you know, that it's, it's synonymous with our name, Bundaberg Brew Drinks. We, I mean, we strive to be the leader in non-alcoholic beverages around the world. So having our product arrive on a shelf here in Bundaberg at the Woolworths locally, uh, we want it to look the same if it was to arrive in the US or in uh, Korea or anywhere that we export to the 60 countries. So when, when our customers are opening the container, their end and they're seeing rounded uh, corners or movement uh, or you know, the loads have moved in the shipping container. Uh, that's not what we're about. We're all about high quality. So um, it was just a no brainer for us to, to call Sigma. Mm, that makes a lot of sense, Ronnie. Like your, your product yeah. definitely is that, mate. It's quality. We might move on to the products is, Sorry, Brad. A lot of our yeah, products, are, they're also retail ready. So a lot of our products go straight on the shelf. So we need to ensure that the you know the way we make them here on site is how they're presented to the consumer. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, that packaging plays a big part. You know, certainly when the consumer drinks it, they get the experience. But if they don't see it from the moment of the packaging, it could degrade that. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. So Greg, let's talk continuous improvement for the future because you've already mentioned it a few times. But why is Signet putting energy into a program like this with TPO and continuously putting extra effort in with continuous improvement with Bundaberg Brew Drinks? Like, what, what are the next innovations you're coming up with? Well, there's, there's plenty of uh, reasons why we're doing this program. It, uh, we're educated and we understand what film does and how it performs with machinery. Uh, a lot of our clients aren't totally aware. They think they're getting the best possible performance, but We've spent many hours and a lot of investment in understanding the process of how um, palletizing works. Um, we invest a lot of money in the in the test cube 
to identify, and this is not through a manual handling or a visual, this is a computer tested um, analysis machine that gets uh, uh, put onto a, a customer's wrapping device and it will print out a reading of how much pressure is applied to the base, the middle, and also the top of the, the pallet. Now, these sort of things are uh, imperative. If we're gonna start talking about understanding what we're doing, we need to be able to demonstrate it. And the test cube has been able to do that in uh, very, very successfully in many customers. So uh, when we did take that product out, that was one of the things that our industry hasn't had before. Uh, a lot of the time, people would walk up to a pallet, put their hand behind the, the film and the product and go, oh yeah, that feels pretty tight. Um, is that secure? Yeah, 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 should be good, mate. Not understanding what the film is actually doing. Um, in situations like that, you could have a product that's got too much tension, which is gonna cause that corner crush and get the product at the other end, not looking at its best shape. So, so what we obviously did is in, in the TPO, basically means we've got to ensure that the customers are going to get the most uh, out of what we're providing. So the safety and the stability of a pallet is is crucial. Um, we talk safety all the time, and, and this is getting um, more traction now because of the, the, uh, the chain of responsibility in our industry. We send out pallets, and if it falls over, like you said at the start, where's it, where's it lie? Who's, who's responsible? Mm. Um, and we've invested time to understand that if we can help our customers edu and educate them in, in what the best practice is for their type of equipment or even by hand, uh, we feel good. We've done the right thing and the customers are going to stay with us because we're, we're, we're proving to them that we're going to have their uh, interest at, at heart and um, make sure that they're going to get the best possible outcome. You know, the improvements in, in film and technology is unbelievable. Um, it wasn't that long ago that film was only made with three or a seven layer uh, technology. Now they're talking 55 layer and don't ask me to explain how that works but if you can imagine a 17 or 20 micron film having 55 layers you go it's not possible but this is the technology like like anything in our, our working life things getting better and better. So we have uh, improvements uh, for Bundaberg brewed drinks. We've got a couple of products we want to show them again um, and walk them through some more testing of product that's going to do the same type of stability load, making sure that they're going to get the, the best possible outcome and also down-gauging the material. Um, the, the future is, is very exciting for, for our type of business because we are involved in so many actual, uh, actual customers. And in regards to the film, the machinery is also improving. So we've got that, the correlation of great machines, great film, we, we, there's no reason our customers can't um, have the best possible service and, and return on investment on uh, what they're doing in their business. Mm, and help the environment while they do it. It's, well, it's that's amazing. just, the, that's just the end result, isn't it? Like there's gonna be way less film used um, and our, our understandings on, on what to do with that film when it's um, finished being used as mm. recycled, they, they, mm. that sort of industry is coming up. And it is also talking about biofilm as well. Um, we're still on the, the cutting edge of that at the moment. I'm not sure when that's gonna be available for us to start supplying, but the, the discussions around uh, film that's gonna degrade down the track, um, that's gonna start to accelerate. We're, we're very mm. conscious of that, but we, what we've got at the moment is, is a high quality product um, that is a, a less gauged than what we've had in the past, which is actually give you a better result. Um, mm. Having less stretch through the film uh, ensures those pallets stay more stable and get to the other end in a, in a pristine condition. Well, thanks, Greg. Thanks for sharing that. Ronnie, what's, what's the next improvement focus area for Bundaberg Brew Drinks? Uh, well, it's, as Greg was saying, they have a couple more products that um, we'll be testing in the near future. So um, our journey with Stretch Wrap has not ended. It's, it will continue. Uh, Greg and the team have always got some great uh, products there on offer. So we'll, uh, we'll have them coming through in the coming months, hopefully. Um, 
hopefully the world settles down a bit by then so we can <laughs> be on site. Um, but uh, I suppose for us, um, I, I've only I've just recently spoken to Greg as well. Uh, we're looking at our PET strapping. So all of the strapping that's on our uh, raw materials that are coming into Bundaberg Brew Drinks, um, for years gone past, we've recycled them. Um, but we'd like to explore what we could do around that, see whether we could be reused, whether we chip the, the PET strapping and, and sold for um, other uses. So it's in the last last few weeks, uh, we've taken that on as a project. So we're excited about that. That's a great avenue, Ronnie. There's so many business opportunities, even for businesses like your own, to get involved in those circular activities. That That's awesome. Yeah. So guys, we're working with... Sorry, we're working with local... Uh, here in Barnaberg as well so just trying to keep everything at the moment uh, you know local uh, just mm. to support the economy as well. There's so much of that at the moment it's so good to see this support Australian industry support Australian manufacturing it's it's brilliant. Um, I can see a lot of focus on continuous improvement guys and I really value the conversation about these small steps to achieve great things you know and, and it, it's inspiring to see you know two great Australian family-owned businesses you know, doing so much for our economy and also doing so much for our environment. You know, thank you guys. I think it's just amazing. Um, everyone, that that is actually concluding the end of the presentation and we're, we're going on to Q&A now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brad, Ronnie and Greg. Now we do have a little more time to answer your questions. Please ask your questions in the chat if you'd like to join our discussion. We do have a couple of great questions to start off. So uh, this one is for Greg and Ronnie. Now, can you please give us a little bit more detail around the film that Bundaberg Brew Drinks is using? Is it a cast or is it a blown film? And what is the UM that they're currently using? Um, it is a cast film. We're finding we're having uh, unbelievable success with our cast range of products. Uh, currently we're using a 17 micron platinum blend. Uh, we have a few different blends of product. So this is our premium product and um, there is a range of different gauges in that product. Mm. And don't let the word premium scare you off. Um, <laughs> I mean, Greg, Greg and I spoke many, many times uh, about price because you know, it's, it's a lot of things are price driven. And when Greg started first talking to me, oh, I've got this premium product, I've got this premium product. And I was a little <laughs> hesitant because premium equals more money normally. So, um, you know, Greg did wear me down and that's where we got to the, the platinum range and we've got into the premium platinum and, and we are seeing the benefits and the return on investment for sure. Mm -hmm. It's so much got to be about total cost, doesn't it, guys? You've got to look at total cost too, not just Definitely. the cost of physically something. Because it's ultimately the total cost that hits the company's bottom line. The next one that we have is for Greg. Uh, does the optimization process that you talk about only apply to larger, larger organisations? Where do I start if I'm a smaller business? Oh, absolutely not as a uh, large business. Anyone can be involved in this TPO process. Um, it's, it's, it's one of our uh, joys as being able to help as many customers as possible. Uh, our teams, all our sales teams are, are trained up to understand TPO and, and what's involved. So any of the small customers out there, are they using, even just using hand film? Um, mm. What we obviously start looking at is we assess what they're currently doing. And um, using hand film, a lot of businesses are a bit nervous about down-gauging hand film. But the, the reality is hand film is used physically and it, it's individual on how it's applied. So a minor technique change or a little bit of conversation with one of our sales teams will enable a customer to downgauge their product unbelievably safety, uh, safely without any issue with stability. Um, because we have invested the time and effort into understanding films, there is a great number of films available that we could um, apply to a, a customer's uh, process to improve their output and also improve their stability as well as saving them a few dollars along the way but with hand film it is um, individual and it is a trained experience to be able to get the best out of that on smaller users that have machines same again 
um, it's all about the correlation of the film and the machine. There's no issue about uh, discussing what products you're currently using and how we can improve that for you. Yeah, and we found, Greg, as well, uh, with the, the lower microns, so when we went to 17 Platinum, the operator feedback was that they preferred to use that on the hand applicator. Okay, uh, yeah. Instead of the 20 micron because it was a, lot, a, a much softer feel. So, yes. and uh, not that we had an injury uh, around that, but I mean, to me, that would pose a manual handling risk if you had people trying to monster, you know, the big UM film around. Um, so, yeah, definitely don't let that smaller micron concern you. Yeah, that's absolutely. a great insight, Ronnie. Fantastic. And uh, one more for either Greg or Brad. Uh, what is biofilm? Can you please explain this product a little bit more to us? You want me to take that, Greg? Like, yeah, you can take guys, that one, sure. Yep. So, guys, with, with um, the whole circular economy approach, just saying that something's uh, biodegradable, it could mean that it's going to biodegrade down into microplastic. And I think most of us know how bad microplastic is. But the key is for the future that we get biodegradable down to nutrient, down to actual plant-based compostable. And it's also important that when we look at this, we make sure that it can be composted. And so with these films, there's a lot of consideration and we've got to apply it to the right supply chain that it's going to end up at a place that it ends up in the right composter to be turned into fertilizer. And that's what we're talking about, these new compostable biofilms. You've really got to be careful with the branding on bio because it can mean all sorts of things. But APCO is doing a lot of work. There's a lot of great resources on the APCO website. There's a lot of great resources on the Signet website to help educate around that topic. We have one more here and it is how long were the roles being used in the trial to complete? So the roles where we have the, it was wrapping of 40 pallets to versus wrapping the 46 pallets. Sorry, repeat that. How long were the roles? Yeah, how many metres were the roles of stretch film being used? Uh, I think the roles that you currently were using were around about 1,530 metre rolls. They were a standard, um, 20 micron, um, but this is also part of the, the process we, we tackled. Not all films or machine rolls weigh the same amount. Uh, we have discovered that there's some rolls, uh, 15 kilo rolls, we generally have 15 kilo rolls as our net weight of our film. But we found that some were 14 and 14.3 and 13, and there's even some, and there's even 12 kilo rolls out there. Um, so we don't just assess a machine roll being the same. We, we need to measure this. Uh, so we had our equipment to identify that the, the, the film that Ron was using was um, only a 15, 30 metre roll. And the assumption was they were actually longer than that. So when we put our product through, uh, ours are slightly longer, but it's certainly not the same percentage uh, at 1630 meters for our 20 micron. This made a, a huge difference, uh, even just from that meterage, but it was also the stretch component that graded the extra uh, pallets of yield. So there was, there's a few variations in there. It's, it's not just the length of the roll or the gauge, it's, it's how the product performs with the equipment. And that's the key to having Signet. Uh, that was the key to us, Greg, having you guys on board. Because uh, I think we're only getting about 100, 120% stretch out of our original. And by the time you guys had finished, we're almost around that 250 mark, I thought. So when I said before, we're literally stretching it longer, we are. Mm. Yep. yep. Fantastic. So we have one last question before we wrap up today. How many sites and people were involved in the change program? And what was the reaction from the operators on the floor? So we would have had uh, possibly 12 forklift drivers involved um, in the original uh, scope. And I suppose there's probably 50 people all up in the whole supply chain on site here at BBD that were part of, a part of that. Um, change is always a difficult thing, um, but by us engaging our team, um, having them involved in the process from the start, uh, everyone was on board. 
And as soon as I saw the benefits that, you know, it's going to help everyone here on site, um, it just yeah, made it happen a lot quicker. Uh, we, we did uh, trials, so we, we did shipping trials um, around Australia via and also export. So um, everyone invited into the project was, were definitely on board with it. Because I, this morning I've been presenting at a tech group on, on business and change and change management. This is a group of CEOs who meet to share and learn. And one statement I said to them was, do change with people, not to people. And that one statement really resonated with the group. I think, I think that's the, that one statement I made, I probably could have just turned up and said that and finished, but it, it really resonated. Yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you so much to our presenters, Greg, Brad and Ronnie. We will email you the webinar recording along with some helpful resources where you can gain further knowledge around this topic. While you're still in the webinar, remember there is a Downgaging white paper available to download. There's also a great video on Bundaberg Brew Drinks if you'd like to find out a little bit more about this great Australian success story. Thank you once again to our speakers. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on board. For all our attendees, you will see a short survey pop up at the end to let us know how the webinar was for you. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. No worries. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Cheers.